We all think LiveScope helps anglers catch more fish, but does it actually help you catch bigger ones? A brand new study tracked catch rates and size for both bass and crappie anglers, with and without forward-facing sonar. And the results? might not be what you expect. So this is a brand new study just published in September of 2025. And this is the first major peer reviewed study that actually took a look at the catch rates by anglers for both bass and crappie as well. Now this study was done by a team of researchers by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission or the FWC, which is a state regulatory agency for Florida. And it was on Lake Talqueen, which is near Tallahassee. Now this study was to look at the numbers of fish that anglers caught, both the crappie and the bass, the size of their catch, and then how many they kept. And they wanted to compare with and without forward facing sonar and from Florida's uh, standpoint, what they're looking at, they're a regulatory agency. So they want to see the impact on the fishery because there has been backlash, obviously, with forward-facing sonar. Some people are, are afraid that it makes it too easy, that you're fishing out res reservoirs. So this is the first time that an agency actually really took a quantitative look, like actual hard data, and saw how many fish are being caught, how big, and how many are going home to the frying pan. So Lake Tolquin, hopefully I'm saying that right, it's about 9,000 acres. I've never fished it, but basically they said it's well known as a big bass uh, fishery and very popular with crappie anglers as well. Now the regulations for bass on here, it's five fish, and only one can be over 16 inches, but there are a number of tournaments there, and there are exceptions for that, where I believe it's probably, like the other Florida lakes I've fished, it's probably a 12 inch limit in the tournaments. I'm not 100% sure on that, but based on my experience, but basically they said the catch and release rate uh, for bass, almost everybody, whether they're in a tournament or not, it's like 5% keep rate, or you know, uh, retention rate. So they didn't track how many bass were being kept. They assume most of those being released. Now the crappie, a little bit different. Those are black crappie and there's a protective limit down there, a 10 inch limit, which is from what they said in the study, sounds like that's higher than most uh, lakes in, in Florida. So it's, it's not necessarily a trophy uh, fishery, but to keep the quality good, they have a 10 inch limit and it's 25 crappie, 10 inches or more. Now for the survey, what they did is it was actual on the water surveys and they surveyed a lot of anglers. They did it for 16 weeks. So like peak season over four months, uh, you're looking at February into June of 2024. So this is pretty current. So LiveScope has been around for a bit. It's not like it was at the very infancy. We're talking the spring of last year into the summer when people obviously had figured out LiveScope, both for crappie for a while now and for bass. And what they did is they interviewed a number of uh, actual fishermen on the water, uh, actually, you know, hundreds of them. And they also, so they, they asked them, how many fish have you caught? How many keepers? And they wanted a size breakdown as well. Now with the crappie, they did basically just asked, were they 10 inches, you know, keeper size or less? How many of both did you catch? On the bass, they broke it down a little bit more. They want to know how many dinks, like under 12 inches, uh, medium size, 12 to 16, which is tournament keeper up to legal keeper, and then 16 to 24 inches, which, you know, obviously pretty good ones, and then potential giants, the 24 inches and larger. Now, these were all reported by the anglers, so they did note, uh, you know, it's based on the honesty of the angler, uh, you know, the memory of the angler. So some people probably embellished a little bit. Some people were probably a little leery of the game board. Maybe they underreported. Uh, so the numbers aren't, you know, necessarily perfect. They didn't uh, have a researcher in the boat to, to watch the whole time, but it gives you a pretty good lay of land. How many keepers are you catching? How many big ones? How many little ones? All based on what the angler said. So let's start off with the black crappie. Again, it's 10 inch to limit here. 37% of all the anglers were crappie fishermen surveyed. So pretty uh, popular crappie fishery here. And 26%, about a quarter of them, were actually using forward-facing sonar. Now their catch rates, the catch rates for those using forward-facing sonar were higher. It was 1.77 fish per hour versus 1.26 per hour for the people not using it. The thing was, the release rate was a lot higher as well for the people on the forward-facing sonar. They were releasing basically one fish per hour, where the non-forward-facing sonar folks were releasing about 0.58, so about 0.6. And that was mostly because the people with forward-facing sonar, they were catching more fish, but they were catching a lot more small fish, under 10 inch. Uh, they were catching 0.92 of those, almost one per hour, whereas the non-forward-facing crowd was catching 
0.5 uh, per hour, so like half a fish. So forward-facing sonar with crappie, they were catching more, but they weren't catching more keepers or good fish. Now the fishery managers were pretty concerned about harvest rate. They wanted to see if the fisheries were getting fished out, and basically there was no difference. On the harvest rate, uh, it was pretty similar. The number of fish kept by the you know the crappie fishermen were keeping keepers, whether they were using forward-facing sonar or not. And the release rate was only about 11% of actual keepers, so most of them were keeping them. The thing was, like I said, the forward-facing crowd, they were getting more action. They were catching more fish. The number of keepers that they caught were almost identical. So basically, they, they caught about the same number of keepers. It's just the forward-facing sonar crowd was catching more fish, a lot of little ones mixed in as well. Now, they also noted this was for overall, but during the seasons, it had a big difference. Uh, when you looked at period two, which was March 11th to April 7th, uh, during that period, the folks with forward-facing sonar almost caught two fish per hour. They were catching 1.91 versus the, the folks without forward-facing sonar, they were getting 0.76. So basically two fish per hour versus three quarters of a fish per hour. So forward-facing sonar during that period made a big difference. What they noted there was that was during the spawn. So during the spawning season, however these fish were setting up, the people with forward-facing sonar were way more effective at catching them. So uh, obviously you're taking off spawning fish and it can depend on the season, how they set up. Same with like bass, right? When they're out in open water, forward-facing sonar is more effective. When sometimes we're, when they're round cover, not as big a difference with the crappie here on this lake when they were spawning it made a huge difference as they noted overall though the basic uh number of fish being kept was about the same with either group and then the other thing was that because of the 10 inch minimum they said that basically protected the fishery more than anything. So to summarize this pretty quickly, I'll put a, uh, several charts right here. You can look in the top left. That's just overall catch. You see that the black hop, crappie caught, the white there, that's people with forward-facing sonar. It's higher. They're catching more. Uh, the number of release, though, you look to the right of that on chart B, you see they release more as well. So that's a small fish. When you look at the bottom left, those two blocks, that's how many were kept. Those are keepers, and remember, most of those are being caught, only 11% are being released. So basically, the legal catch, uh, the amount being kept is about the same. You look at the bottom right, D, that's the number of small fish, and you see there where it shows up. It's basically like a double rate of the small fish in the white column there uh, by the people with forward-facing sonar. Now, the one thing I find interesting is that in this is the fact that I would speculate, this total speculation, they, they address a little bit in this study, but the folks that have forward-facing sonar, those are, I'm guessing, probably your uh, more hardcore fishermen, right? So that talent level, if they're buying forward-facing sonar, if they're investing that much, probably have the nicer boats, they're probably doing it on more days, more hardcore, not necessarily. Uh, you know, I'm not sure that shakes out all the time, but you can probably guess some of the people that are catching are just Kid, people taking kids out that are uh, crappie fishing versus more hardcore. And the fact that you would assume the four facing crowd, they had the better technology. And I'm guessing they're probably, uh, on average, probably the uh, more talented group, more experienced group of anglers, uh, possibly. And their harvest rate is pretty similar. I found that kind of, uh, kind of shocking. I figured that the group with the technology probably the more hardcore anglers would catch more keepers, but it was interesting that they weren't catching more of them. So let's take a look at the bass, obviously, and see how it shakes out there with the forward-facing crowd. So on the bass side of things, I didn't cover this before, but basically they interviewed almost 1,200 fishermen, and they estimated pretty much 55,000 hours worth of angling was covered in this survey. So it's a pretty good sized sample. And 22% of those 1,200 were bass fishermen. So of that, 28%, so about a quarter again, were, doing, uh, were using forward-facing sonar. And 29% of those forward-facing crowd were actually in a tournament. So you're looking at, uh, there's a pretty good representative sample of pretty hardcore anglers here. A quarter of them had forward-facing sonar. Of that quarter... 30% of those almost were in tournaments that day when they surveyed them. Now, on the bass side of things, you see a little bit more of a spread here. Number of fish caught per hour. Folks using forward-facing sonar, 1.32 fish per hour. Bass of any size. N folks not using forward-facing sonar, 
a half fish per hour, 0.5. So you're to have 1.32 with live scope, 0.5 without it. And then when you look at the size of the fish, like the good size fish, it gets even more pronounced. Large bass, 16 inches and bigger, 0.49. So basically half of a fish per hour caught by folks with live scope. Those without live scope, they were catching 0.09. So a 10th of a fish. So 0.49, versus 0.09, half a fish versus a tenth of a fish per hour, 16 inches or bigger, big difference there using live scope. Basically we're looking at five times more of the 16 inch and larger fish using forward facing sonar versus those without. And then they also noted it was seasonal as well. Period one, which was February 12 up to March 10, uh, a little bit earlier in the season, there was a big difference there, both in numbers and size. It was very pronounced. And then also in the last period, which we may uh, into June, forward-facing sonar users had uh, considerably higher catch rates as well. So that's kind of what we see in bass fishing a lot around the spawn when they're shallow. You don't see the difference when it's pre-spawn and they're floating around in that cooler water. And then during the summer, once they start to get away from the cover and float again, that's where forward-facing sonar starts to take over. So the conclusions that the researchers drew from this was it was, for starters, the first study that actually measured quantitatively, do you actually catch more fish and bigger ones? Uh, pretty clearly in this one, the folks with forward-facing sonar were catching more and bigger. And it was definitely seasonal. During the spawn, it was pretty similar. But before the spawn, after the spawn, that's where you saw live scope be a big major advantage. Now study limitations on it though. This is correlation, not causation. Like we talked about with the crappie anglers a little bit, uh, a lot of these fishermen who were actually you know, using live scope or tournament fishermen, uh, you would probably expect there again, not always, but a lot of these fishermen are gonna be uh, your more skilled, hardcore anglers, which I would, it'd be interesting to see if you did this, if you had that same group, a true scientific blind study would be to have those anglers who have the forward-facing sonar, have them use the forward-facing sonar, but then also those same anglers not use it and then do the same with the people that didn't have it. That would be a true, you know, double blind sort of uh, true scientific study because my guess is the folks that are using the forward-facing sonar, a lot of the tournament fishermen, they're just hardcore weekend warriors, die hard, you know, every day out there retirees that are doing it all the time. Uh, you know, so these are probably better anglers. They're probably going to catch more and bigger fish on a regular basis. Whereas if the game warden rolls up and they check somebody who's fishing for bass, but they're just casting around a top water out in the middle of nowhere or just, you know, dragging a worm around, maybe they're not that good of fishermen. The other thing is, I didn't really see a breakout in here, but this is Florida. A lot of live bait getting fish, so I don't know how much that played in. If you're using live scope and live bait, uh, you're gonna be pretty effective. I would have suspected being in Florida that if if more people were using live bait, like I've seen on you know the Harris chain and, and Toho and Okeechobee and stuff, I don't care how much live scope you have, if you pull up next to a, a guy with uh, live shiners and throwing them on a, a cork and he's around them or a guide boat or something, they're catching way more. I don't care how good your live scope is, those guys are catching them. So I don't know how much that's intertwined. So this, you know, this study kind of showed there's actually a difference, but it really has, a, in my eyes, a bit of clarification or for it to be cold, hard facts, you would really have to test those anglers, all the anglers with and without live scope and actually have somebody in the boat documenting actual catches instead of just a guesstimate and stuff. So, you know, not conclusive facts, hard, you know, stone cold uh, scientific data, but also gives a definite idea that, hey, outside of, a, outside of the spawning window, like we suspected, lives go, you know, on the bass especially, pretty big advantage. Now remember, this is the FWC, the regulatory body in Florida, and from their perspective, they're they're wanting to make sure that it's a sustainable fishery, how many, uh, the health of the reservoir, can people catch fish, the satisfaction rates and stuff. They noted that bass retention rate, that the 
keep rate was 5% or less. So they weren't worried about these fish being taken home. They were being caught and, and turned back both by both you know by the forward-facing sonar crowd and the non-forward-facing sonar crowd. Their question was, if more fish are being caught and some of those get gut hooked or they're overhandled, hold them out of the water for pictures and stuff too long, kept in live wells and not treated well or during the wrong time of year, even though they're released, you could be getting delayed mortality, so you could be killing it, some of these fish without knowing it. And then also, are you making these fish, they've been caught before, so for the average fisherman, are they tougher to catch the next time? In five years, are these fish all gonna be hook shy and harder to catch? So from their standpoint, you know, to keep everyone satisfied with fishery for the health of it, you know, that's kind of what they're looking at going forward. I think all states are kind of looking at this. Are the catch rates going to drop off? Is the overall population going to change? People aren't really keeping bass, but we'll see what happens. So their main takeaways, what they were looking at in the short term, looks like it's more fish being caught, but they're being turned back on the bass side. On the crappie side, those fish, the catch rate, the actual harvest rate is about the same. So they're looking more at limits. On the bass side, it's more about, well, we got to take a, a look and see. And they also noted other lakes that are shallower, uh, have more grass and stuff. These findings, this is for one lake, more need to be done. But it's pretty interesting. It's the first time someone actually took a look at this. So I'll be eager to keep looking at the research in the coming years, you know, and a lot of these agencies are starting to take a look at it and see if this is a trend that with forward-facing sonar, we're seeing a lot of bigger fish being caught with it versus not or is it something that in several years like the alabama rig and, and the chatterbait when it first came out a lot of these baits when they first come out it's a game changer after a few years the fish kind of catch up and the you know the fish returns to normal so i'm guessing your next question is what happens with fish and pressure if they get caught more more boats around what happens do they move do they bite less actually i looked at a couple other studies check those out in my full science playlist See what fishing pressure does to fish.